Hey there, my wedding planning friends, and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, thanks so much for clicking on my video. I'm Emily Summer. I'm a wedding planner based in Montana, and I make weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice. So today's topic is something that isn't discussed a whole lot, and it isn't that common with a lot of my clients anymore, but I know there are still plenty of couples out there that want to include some sort of unity ceremony into their wedding ceremony. So if that's you, then this video is for you, and I compiled 10 ideas for different unity ceremonies to include at your wedding ceremony. So first of all, for anyone that is unclear, a unity ceremony refers to a symbolic ceremony during your actual wedding ceremony that symbolizes the unity and commitment to each other and often even involves family members on either partner's side as well. So the most common version of this is a unity candle. And so you've likely seen this at a wedding. Maybe you did this yourself at your wedding, um, but the unity candle and the lighting of the unity candle is probably the most well-known uh, unity ceremony at a wedding ceremony. And what this is, is you essentially have a one larger unlit candle in the center of a table and you'll have two smaller candles. And they, these can be either lit for the duration of your wedding ceremony or there's something that you go and lit light yourselves during the actual unity ceremony. And you have two separate candles and the idea is that you and your partner would each take the two smaller separate candles, light them if they're not lit already, and then at the same time, use those lit candles to simultaneously light the larger candy candle in the middle and then blow those ones out. So the idea is that you're taking two separate parts and lighting this one unity candle as you are celebrating your union to each other, um, two individuals into one, that whole thing. So. It's a very simple yet effective way to have a unity ceremony at your wedding ceremony. I will say, however, if you are having an outdoor ceremony or anywhere that are, where wind could be a potential issue, do not recommend doing the candle as a unity ceremony option for you as it will likely blow out and then it just gets a little bit awkward when that happens. Another unity ceremony is a hand fasting. I've had a couple of my clients do this and this actually came from a um, Celtic tradition. So it's the idea that your um, each partner's right hand is bound together during a portion of the ceremony, usually during the vows, and again it's symbolic to the commitment to each other. A third unity ceremony option is a sand pouring, and again this might be something that you have seen at a wedding. It's a fairly common unity ceremony practice, and it's a great option if you're having a nautical or a beach themed wedding, it fits really nicely into that. Um, and so the idea is that you again have two separate sands, typically different colored sands for you and your partner have a different color, and then during the unity ceremony, you will pour each one individually, but at the same time into one empty vase where you will now have the combination of the two different colored sands to again represent the two becoming one. Similar to the sand pouring is a glass pouring, which I actually had a couple do last summer and this was the first time I had seen it, but it's actually become a fairly popular um, unity ceremony option and there's a company that provides this service. And the idea is that much like the sand pouring, you have two vases that have different colored glass beads in them. And then it's the same act, you're pouring each individually, you have your own color um, and you're pouring them together into one empty vase so that you have a collection of these glass beads all mixed together. And then what you do is you actually send off that vase of glass beads to a glass blowing artist. So the company that I'm most familiar with is called Unity in Glass and they actually, an artist actually takes your vase of mixed glass crystals and turns it into a glass sculpture that you can then have in your home. And I think this is such a cool way to not only have that kind of unity ceremony incorporated into your wedding, but also have something that is a keepsake afterwards that you could have in your home that is a symbol of that unity that you can actually enjoy in your home and have a beautiful piece of art out of it. Number five is a tree planting. And I had heard of it, but I'd never seen it until actually just a few weeks ago, I had a couple do that this summer, where just like it sounds, you plant a tree during your unity ceremony at your wedding. And unless you're getting married on you know, your own property or family property or somewhere where you can physically plant the tree, likely you're going to do what most other couples do and kind of symbolically plant the tree into a pot and not actually plant it into the ground until you get it someplace where you can permanently plant it. So what you would do during your ceremony is have the tree in some sort of pot and then you and your partner would each have your own you know, bucket or bowl or whatever you're going to do of soil and your own shovel, don't forget the shovel, 
And um, another way to kind of add a extra element of symbolism is to have each of your soils come from your hometown or maybe your family's property or something like that to have that extra connection to each of you. And the idea is that you each take your individual soils and you pour it into the one pot with the tree so that you are combining both of your backgrounds and your soils and your homes into this one tree that's going to symbolize your unity. You would then take the tree at a later date and plant it wherever you wish. Maybe that's in your own home or maybe a shared space that you guys like to travel to, um, a family cabin, you know, anything like that to plant the tree for its permanence. The tree planting ceremony also has an extra um, added symbolism as that much like your marriage and your relationship, this tree is going to need attention and love and support to grow and flourish. Another type of unity ceremony that is a which is a more fun and kind of casual unity ceremony is the blending of paint. And this is great if you are a more artsy couple or a little bit more on the playful side. Basically you would take, you would have a, a blank canvas and you would each have a different color paint, just a small little jar of paint and pour it onto the canvas and let the colors kind of drip and blend together. And similar to the glass pouring unity ceremony, you would be left with something, the piece of art that you would be able to have as, as a keepsake in your home following the actual wedding ceremony. A so, couple of notes here though, um, definitely recommend this for an outdoor ceremony so if you do spill paint you're not spilling it all over your wedding venue. Um, also encourage having some sort of drop cloth on the table that you are going to be doing the unity ceremony at, something that will not be hurt if it gets paint on it. Um, also if you are in a very fancy, large, cumbersome uh, wedding gown, Consider having something to put over it during this as well. Um, you know, the idea is that you're going to be pouring it kind of far away, so there shouldn't be any paint mishaps, but that's always something to keep in mind if you are using paint in any capacity on your wedding day. Number seven is the releasing of a wish lantern. So um, I've seen this done as a an exit to a wedding as well, um, but if you are having a nighttime wedding, this could be a really cool thing to do during your actual ceremony as well. And the idea is that you take a paper lantern and release it into the sky. And some couples will even write, physically write onto the lantern, you know, their intentions with their partner, maybe wishes they have for them as a couple, maybe even pieces of their vows, whatever you want to do, and release that into the sky. Um, many couples also choose to have their guests included in this, which is why I've seen it done a lot as a kind of a grand end exit um, from the wedding as guests will also release wish lanterns into the sky for their own wishes, but also as kind of a, you know, wish of good fortune and love and a happy marriage for the couple on their endeavors. Number eight is the circling ceremony. So this is a Jewish tradition and very common at Jewish weddings. And, and what happens during a circling ceremony is each partner takes turns circling around the other typically seven times. And what this does is it symbolizes the creation of new family and a circle of protection and love that each is placing around the other. Number nine is a wine or beer pouring. And what happens here is much like any of the other pouring unity ceremonies, you would each have your own type of alcohol. So for example, if you're doing a wine pouring, um, you would each have your own type of wine that is separate but also complementary to each other. So if you were to mix it together, it would be like a nice red blend. Um, so you each have your own type of wine and then you would pour it into a shared wine glass that you would then take turns drinking and, and consume during your this unity ceremony at your wedding. Um, you could do the same thing with beer. I've also seen it done with different types of liquor. My brother actually and his wife did it with whiskey at their wedding and rather than having it shared into a glass that they consumed at the wedding, they had a little whiskey barrel that they poured each of their types of whiskey into and then sealed it and have aged it and they plan on consuming it on like their 10 year anniversary or some type of anniversary. So that's another option as well. This is a fun unity ceremony to again bring in parts of your personality or your relationship. Maybe wine tasting is something that you guys really enjoy doing together or you're really into craft beer or whiskey tasting or whatever that is, kind of bringing a piece of your personal life and your relationship into your unity ceremony. And number 10, kind of on the same lines as this um, wine or beer pouring is the wine box ceremony. And I actually had never seen this done until just a couple of weeks ago. I had a, um, a couple choose to do this. And what the wine box ceremony is, is you select a wine that will age well and put it in a box during your unity ceremony. So. The box is unlocked and opened during your ceremony. You guys will place this wine bottle into the wine box 
Often this is done with letters to one another or mementos from the previous few years of your relationship or however long you want to kind of have little pieces from your relationship placed in this box, letters to each other, maybe goals for your relationship, um, things you want to accomplish together, places you want to see together, whatever you want to include into this box. And then you seal it during your ceremony and it is to be open and enjoyed on whatever anniversary you choose. So a lot of times this is like their 10th anniversary, you'll open the box, drink the wine together, read the letters you wrote to each other, whatever intentions, goals, dreams, aspirations, everything you had as a couple that you had placed in there. I do believe my couple that just did this chose to do it every every anniversary, so that's totally up to you however you want to do this. This is your unity ceremony, and the idea was that they would read the letters that they wrote to each other on each anniversary and then write a new one and place it in there for the following anniversary. So however you want to do this, it's totally up to you. If you want to have some sort of unity ceremony included in your wedding ceremony, here are some ideas. And it could be a great way to, like I said before, kind of bring in a piece of your relationship and who you guys are as individuals and in your relationship into your wedding ceremony. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get weekly videos on wedding planning tips and advice, and we'll see you next week.